Hello, Ray Phoenix here. Welcome to Let's Play Sonic the Hedgehog Part 2. So now we're in the third act of the Marble Zone. We'll be running into that fat man-child that comes up wants to rule the world, Dr. Robotnik again. I'm starting to think that a lot of Dr. Robotnik is some sort of, you know, like one of those man-children low cows we see on we see on YouTube. And maybe he's one of them, and maybe he wants to capture Sonic so we could really have Sonic all for himself. Maybe that's why he planned this whole, you know, taking over the world thing, which is what he does in this game. Maybe that was his real intention all along. Maybe he was secretly a man-child all along, maybe. That Sega never wanted to admit it or something. That the old man's game never wanted to admit to it or something like that. So we're going to do our more usual platform. We have to push these square blocks down. These blocks are incredibly 2D square. Well, it's a 2D game. So it makes sense everything in this game would be 2D. But these, but these group designs are really good. Like, the backgrounds look very lively. They look very vibrant. They look like they're rich of detail. It's really impressive for Sega and Genesis to be able to do all that. Especially in the, you know, this is still like somewhat the early days of the Genesis 1991. The Genesis is only after like three years at this point, so it wasn't exactly early Genesis, but it was still like, you know, very, like somewhat early in the Genesis timeline. And then, but this wasn't like later Genesis. In later Genesis, they were starting to introduce 3D games, like it started to give us, you know, like 3D, like, like games that look 3D, like 3D old school polygon games, which didn't really work out very well. And Sonic was the star of one of them. It wasn't even a, it was called a 3D game, but it wasn't really 3D. It was Sonic Isometric Blast. It's a game where you play as Sonic in an isometric, in an isometric world where you can run around and jump on stuff. It's kind of like this, but it's an isometric, kind of like Crystal Castles or something like that. It didn't work very well. And yeah, it was on the Sonic uh, Mega Collection Plus for the for the PS2. That's how I played a lot. I never owned a cartridge to that game. Same with a lot of these other games. I never really owned physical cartridges. So, well, okay, I did own a physical cartridge as some of them, but there were some that I wasn't able to get. Like Sonic Isometric Blast, because that game wasn't really worth my time. Like, for instance, a lot of people thought the same thing, too. It wasn't worth a lot of people's time, but I did manage to own, like, a lot of the other ones. Like, I do also own physical cartridges of Sonic 2 and Sonic 3, Sonic Knuckles. Sonic really did spawn a really huge franchise. It was bad. A lot of people agree that Sonic is by all means way cooler and much better than Mario or a lot of those other Nintendo properties. Nintendo was never up to speed with stuff like this. Get it up to speed because this is really fast. Bubsy tried to be up to speed. Bubsy Bobcat runs super fast. Yes, press an old directional button. Bubsy can probably run just as fast as Sonic. The only problem is Bubsy is weak as hell. He has no rings. He has no health. No nothing. He just gets touched once. He dies. At least Sonic has health. Rings pretty much serve as your health in this game. The more rings you have, you the better. Well, if you get hit once, you lose all your rings, and then you can collect them again, so it can still, you know, regain smell. As long as you have one ring, you can take one hit, but if you get hit and you have no rings, you're dead. The rings are pretty much health in this game, and they allow you to go to the bonus stages, so they actually do serve a pretty significant purpose in this game. Unlike the score, which, there's a score in this game, but the score is completely redundant in this game. It does absolutely nothing. I remember showing this game to one of my relatives once a long time ago, and she was like, Oh, you mean the game has a score, but that's not what the game is about? So why would you play the game then if it doesn't have- if, if, this, if there's- why would you play the game then? The score does absolutely nothing. Isn't that the reason why people play games? Uh, no. That's not why people play games. That's why people ever care about score and they play a video game. Games are never about score. There's always about making progress in them and trying to get to the end of them or finish them or beat them and see what their endings are. That's what video games are always about. No one was it. Almost no one was ever able to do that the original Pac-Man or Ms. Pac-Man. Well, one person did do that the original Pac-Man once back in 1999. But it's sitting from the game for six hours. That game is six hours long. Yeah, this game could only dream about being six hours long. <laughs> This is one of my favorite zones of the game, Spring Yard Zone. This is also the zone of the game where the game officially stops toying with us. This game, we, we were being toyed with in the first two zones, but now that's not happening anymore. We're in the Spring Yard Zone. Now this is where the game really starts to show its dark side. It looks like some sort of carnival level. It plays carnival type music. There's springs everywhere. And there's these like pinball, what do you call them? Bumpers, I think is what you call them. Like from a pinball machine. Or you can hit them and you get points for them. The Sonic actually does make a really good pinball. You can roll into a ball, you can roll around and hit, then hit those balls, those bumpers, and you can get scored for it. Like, ding, 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 makes like a ding sound, just like a pinball machine. And then, I, and, then there, and then she became like a staple for the Sonic series. Almost every Sonic game in the Genesis has at least one level in it, whereas pinball, like, bumpers where you can run into them and get and get scored and Sonic pretty much becomes a pinball and becomes like a pinball game. And there's a whole spin-off that was based on that entire 
this Sonic Spimble. Yeah, Sonic Spimble likely got an inspiration from this level and from another level and from other levels. Like, there's another level similar to this Sonic 2. And even in Sonic CD, Sonic had a Sonic game on the Sega CD called Sonic CD. Some people say it's like the best game in the entire Sonic franchise. It's definitely the best game of the Sega CD. It's also a very confusing game as well, too. I've still never figured out what the old deal of traveling through time was in that game. It's really abysmal. It's kind of why I like this game a bit more. At least it's more straightforward. Sure, it does have BS and have a few odd BS moments, but at least it's more straightforward. In fact, what am I talking about? This game doesn't really have very many BS moments at all. Well, sure, it does have some. Pretty much every game ever made has at least one BS moment, but there aren't a lot of them in this game. I actually give the game praise for that. This game was mostly competing against Super Mario World back in 1991 when it came out. I actually like this game more than Super Mario World, simply because it's, you know, faster, it's more fun, it's more like turn off your mind, kind of just have a good time kind of thing. It doesn't involve a lot of, like, careful strategy and planning like what Mario World has. Sure, Mario World may have had more content, but this game is more quality over quantity. It definitely does, you know, what a game should be, you know, definitely, like, you know, does for very well like, what any good video game should be. You collect a lot of rings here. It's best to collect as many rings as possible. You never know when you're going to be needing them. There are a lot of jump scares in this level, too. Yeah, that's right. People don't really think of... Like, see, like, just happened right there. A lot of people don't really think of associate Sonic with jump scares. But there are jump scares in this level. It's where the game starts to kind of be kind of scary, actually. Where enemies just randomly pop out from you from nowhere. And they smack you. They hit you. You lose all your rings, and then and then all those rings you worked for are suddenly gone, so you can't go to the bonus stage. Now, if you have less than 50 rings, you can't go to the bonus stage, and then you can't get the game completed. And yeah, Spring Yard is really where the game starts to really show what it is demonstrated. If you really want a good example of this game is, go to the Spring Yard zone. This is like, this you know, zone perfectly describes what the original Sonic is like. I definitely like the music, though. The music sounds very party-like. This kind of reminds me of back in the days in 2000 and... In the late 2000s, when I go to carnivals a lot, I used to have carnivals in my town a lot. I would go there, and there would be like, you know, there'd be rocks there, there'd be popcorn and things like that there too. I remember I'd be playing this game a lot, and during the same time where I would be going to the carnival there, and then I remember going to some vendor there, my father was ranting about the onion rings there, because he, he says, oh, you go to the carnival, they taste awesome. And the next day you go to Burger King and you get onion rings, and it's just not the same, it just doesn't taste very good, or is this you know, not what onion rings should be like? I actually kind of like BK onion rings, to be honest. I actually think they're some of the better onion rings. They aren't the best onion rings ever, they're still pretty good. My father would randomly say, Lord of the Onion Rings, one ring to rule them all. Well, and, th and, then I, and then I would be like, well, Sonic collects on onion rings a lot. Even Sir Ron Lionheart used to call him Sonic the Hedgehog, the Porcupine, the Guinea Pig, the Olympic Gold Medal winning onion ring eater. You'd always call these rings onion rings. Sonic collects onion rings a lot of time. And apparently in Sir Ron Lionheart's world, Sonic is like a hybrid of a, of a, of a, of a hedgehog and a porcupine. The Ron Lionheart's gone for a long time, or at least at one point he was. I hope his YouTube account never gets deleted. I hear YouTube is going to start deleting accounts that have inactivity for a long time. It's going to cause all their videos to be gone. This is why I don't really, this is more the reason why I don't trust Google or YouTube at all. It's going to be more and more sus all the time. That's why I like uploading stuff like this to archive.org. I highly encourage all of you to upload stuff to archive.org. If you value preserving your content, whether it's videos or writings or art or whatever it is, I recommend using archive.org. It's the best way to save and preserve your art and your content in general. And there's also other websites too. Like I remember years ago I tried going to Daily Motion. I tried uploading stuff to Daily Motion using as like an alternative to YouTube, but yeah, Daily Motion doesn't work very well. It's a very buggy website. It doesn't tell you all the rules and restrictions of the website before you start uploading. I tried looking for them, it doesn't tell you anything, and it blocks your account a lot of time too. But it's not a good Daily Motion is not that good of a website. It's only saving grace is that it doesn't have a it doesn't have as many like um restrictions as YouTube does. It's more, you know, lenient towards like, you know, you know questionable, objectionable stuff or or copyright the, the content. It's more, more you know, free or open to that. There's also Vimeo, which I've, I've heard of Vimeo before. I think I tried using that a long time ago, but I might look into Vimeo again. But right now, archive.org is the best thing I have right now for uploading videos to. That's not YouTube. I find all kinds of cool stuff on archive.org, and I've talked to an archive.org a lot before, but it really is an awesome website that everyone should go to. They should teach it in schools the importance of backing up data in today's digital world. 
Look, if you, if you, if you can't always trust digital stuff. Like, I don't really trust Google much anymore. Someone hacked my account once and I almost lost everything because Google is not trustworthy. They even deleted my backup email, my emergency backup email, which makes backup emails pointless or backup email accounts pointless. So we got the fifth Chaos Emerald. There we now have five of the six Chaos Emeralds. It's almost all the Chaos Emeralds in this game. And we won yet another continue. So, you know, we definitely have a lot. We definitely have a lot of lives and a lot of continues. Well, look at that. We're already at the third act of Spring Yards. It feels like it just blinked and we're already in the Spring Yard Zone. Just running down this large. This game actually does, you know, go comply with the laws of physics very well. You know, Sonic runs down a hill, he goes faster, and he tries to run up a hill, he doesn't go very fast. The physics of this game actually are very realistic. I mean, I remember praising asteroids for having, like, realistic space-like physics. And that was an arcade game that Atari made back in 1979. I always wish Sonic could have been the star of some more arcade games, like, like maybe like Asteroids, Clones, possibly your Pac-Man. You imagine Pac-Man with Sonic. There supposedly was an arcade game like that that's now considered lost media called Sega Sonic, I think, or something like that. Some like isometric game where you used a roll ball controller. I mean, the game itself is not lost media, but remember there was uh, some lost media associated with it. I'm considering drawing some stuff for my own personal lost media stories, like, like, um, like there's this, like this healthy eating nutrition show that I've been trying to preserve called Bond Squad that was on TVO back in the 2000s and no, the 90s and the 2000s. I was trying to draw, so I was thinking about drawing characters in that show to, because and the only problem with drawing characters is that I have no points of reference because it's solely from my own memory because it's lost media. But I have seen some stuff surface up before, so I know I didn't just dream this. And there are some other, like, odd, like, um, you know, like, rat, like proof things that exist that I found on the internet. So at least I know I'm not, you know, making this up. You know, it's, it's good to prove you're not making this up. I mean, Arcanine F50 likes observing his own memories of things, which is why he likes to, you know, make sure that, his, that the history is never forgotten. It's good that we try to preserve, so that's the spirit of what we lost me people stand for. Trying to preserve, you know, lost media. Make sure stuff never gets lost, never gets forgotten. I don't want any of my videos to ever become lost media. That's why I never delete any of my videos. I have tons of videos I made before 2020 that are still here on YouTube right now. And the contents of them mostly aged like milk. But I still like to keep them even though they've aged like milk. Some people do like keeping milk. It's been expired for 45 years. I see them on orders all the time. They go for their fridge and they find like milk that expired in 1982. Or milk that it, or, or maybe or maybe even something that expired as her or a tub of yogurt that expired on the same day this game came out back in June of 1991 over 30 something years ago. It was like well 1991 was like well over 30 something years ago. We were back in the good old days on play slot. This game was only like maybe I don't know 18 years old or so, 17, 18 years old, and now it's like 30 something years old. This game, like this game, like these games really are staying the test of time. These games have proven themselves to be iconic, timeless classics, and I just unintentionally found a secret area there where we got a shield and a one up. We keep getting, boy, I thought I was dead there for a sec. Those, those light post things that I hit, those are, those are checkpoints. So if we get killed, we'll start there instead of the beginning of the level. And there's a bottomless pit here, right now. I have to wait over this. I remember seeing a screenshot, I remember oddly saving a screenshot from this game, it occurred around this part of the game. That was back in 2006 when I first discovered the ability to go on Google Images and find fits and find images from all sorts of websites all over the internet and save them on your computer. I really went crazy then, I saved tons of pictures. I still have a lot of them on that old Windows XP computer I have from 2006. It still works, and I still use it every now and then. I haven't used it much recently. Mostly it's used enough backing up data, and not even my videos because it doesn't have a big hard drive. So usually it's backup like data that doesn't take up a lot of space. And I use it to run old software a lot of the time. I can actually run this Fusion 364 emulator, which is what I'm using right now to play this game with the Fusion 364. And there we just defeated Robotnik yet again, the cursed man-child yet again that wants to curse Sonic's world and Sonic's existence and have him permanently associated with man-children. Oh, guess in my head canon, that's the official story of Sonic the Hedgehog. This is Ray Phoenix, signing out.